All right, guys. You guys want to blow up your back? Sorry, blow my back up. You want a mass building back workout? Try this. You want bulging lats? You want Tyrannosaurus tra traps? You guys want lats like Dorian Yates? With half the work and half fucking genetics? You want to figure out how to not work hard, get big? You want this is the shortcut channel. There's one thing on pec flies. I notice it because a lot of my clients do it. It's not, I don't honestly, well, some people I see doing it, but it's like this idea that they don't, people don't understand that like, I think they just have to lock their arm in a position and then like push to a point. So they treat everything in a fly like it's, like they're trying to do this. I'm trying to get into here as soon as possible. But it's like, and they don't let weight sit on their palm. So they're, my palm is flat right now. Both sides holding this, it's locked in my lats and my upper back. So when I throw this, this hand accommodates and moves through the handle. I don't go, or keep my hand in this rigid position and it's like, or I'm like, or people who pull, they pull around. It's like, it's the same as if I'm bench pressing. It's the same hand, hand, hand position, I just turn open. So if I was here to press and these are dumbbells or whatever, I'm here in the machine, I'm just going here now or wherever I want, whatever angle I want, I'm just in that flat palm feeling, rocking, right? So, pro tip. Today I'm doing kind of this like, I guess shoulder, a little bit above shoulder height. I do higher, I like to come around, like down more, like most muscular style. But today my shoulder's giving me fucking problems like every other day. So I'm just trying to be like more flat, like come around mid pec. I'm not so much trying to scoop under pec and have this sensation of like almost lifting chest up as I curl. I'm just trying to come around and keep rib cage up through. So my motion of my body isn't as drastic, as drastic as it might be if these were higher, because I'd have to get down through stuff to be able to get my chest through, like push through my shoulders so my shoulders aren't overriding. So this is just find your spot where you stick, basically, where my back locks and rock. Depending on your mobility, could be not even parallel with your body, but the idea is you understand that you're rocking out of the shot. So it's just this swaying. And when you guys do flies, for the love of God, stop doing this when you sit up. My knees like this in this bent position. I, my weight is now, I don't know where my weight is. Now my weight's like in the center of my body. So when I throw, it's hard for me to get out in front of me. Whereas if I put my legs straight and I lean and I put all my weight on my hands and on my back, I can rock up. Up through. So I'm just tipping literally from the side. I'm only tipping, if I'm starting here, I'm just, so I'm never even coming parallel with my hip. I'm always hip behind, I'm just rocking up. So my weight is displaced forward over my toes, right? The only thing holding me in that spot for the most part and keeping my balance is my hand, right? I don't want to be so far forward on my hands. Obviously, like I said, I don't want to let go. If someone knocked the cables out of my hand, I just went flying forward. But yeah, I might end up taking like a step forward because my weight is here, right? It's not back. It's going to be different for everybody. So kind of this kid wrote, not a kid at all, a fucking grown ass man wrote me this morning. It's not like a knock on him because I get these questions all the time. People asking me like, how do I, I want to start lifting like a bodybuilder, whatever that means. And, uh, I'm just, how do, what's a program for me to do? It's like, just pick one, like, literally. <laughs> like anything you deem to be a bodybuilding program, whether you get it from, you buy it from person X or person Y, it doesn't matter. And just follow that program. The adherence to the, to the program and the consistency and the dedication to it is what's gonna elicit the changes, right? And how you're doing the movements that are prescribed in the program. It's not to say that like every, yes, it's gonna give you, re, it's gonna give you sets and reps and like a scheme of how to do things. That's gonna give you structure, especially if you're someone who doesn't work out that often. And then you can learn from that basic structure and see what works for you. You're not bound to it. And there's not one program that like, if you start with this program, there's, this will be the best program ever and you'll stick with it. It's like, no, you'll evolve and you'll be like, I don't wanna do this shit anymore. And I like this a lot better than that. Like you won't see me doing much dumbbell because I just don't like dumbbell for me because it hurts my fucking shoulders. 
So I have to get on fixed, things that are on fixed tracks other than this. So I got a lot of machine pressing and stuff where I can't, my, there's no, there's not a lot of stability or balance or proprioception needed in my shoulder where I'm having to find the spot where my shoulder will lock down. I can start in the position I want and keep that rigid line of movement through the whole press, right? Or through the whole fly. Because I'm not trying to spend nine years setting up for every set. Because on dumbbells, it's like, yeah, you can set up, you can set up perfectly every time. But for someone who has shoulder issues, like anyone else there who can identify with me, it doesn't feel the same every time you set up. It's like, it's the, now your shoulder's a little, now you're more pumped. Now the shoulder isn't as much mobility. Or maybe you laid wrong and you didn't arch enough. And you're like, fuck, like even on this, I'm like, yeah, my shoulder feels like I got to get it even more further back. And I got to like adjust myself. I can do that easily here by changing hand angles, right? But on a dumbbell, I just had this discussion with another client of mine one day. Everyone thinks I'm lying when I say I have these discussions. Like I'm making them up for talking points. Like, what the fuck? Like, do you get none of you speak to people? <laughs> it's like, he just kind of, I've been training for maybe a month now, like just at once a week. And he kind of made, like, he's a fan of bodybuilding. He kind of made the, kind of the same observation I do. And a lot of people do that. Like bodybuilding is like, it's the only sport, if you can call it a sport that doesn't want to evolve. Like they want to evolve in terms of like explanation of stuff. And like, like we see all the time with these anatomical fucking wizards that are like explaining how this and this and this, none of them are really getting ahead in terms of development, just making it sound good. So in a sense, it's like, we always, in bodybuilding, we come back to this like old adage of like, old school is best. Old school is like what we do. You don't need all these machines. You don't need all this stuff. All you need is dumbbells and barbells. It's true. If that's all you have, you can get by. But like, you don't want to take advantage of like, it's like saying like, I don't want a fucking iPhone. I like my Nokia that I can't text on, just receives calls, or like the Motorola like original flip phone. I just like this better. It's like, cool, if that's what you like, but like, don't tell me that having an iPhone wouldn't be way more convenient, like, and do a lot more things to you and make your life a lot easier. And in this case, these machines making your development a lot easier. You still have to put in the work, so no, it's not easy, but like, it's complementing and allowing you to move and like putting you in positions that optimize a, a path of movement that allow you to target a muscle properly. So why wouldn't you want to do that? It doesn't make sense to me. And you guys can point back to like Ronnie and Arnold, all these guys. If they existed in today's time and space, like working out at the level they were, like physique wise and all stuff, they would be using this shit too. They, I guarantee you they wouldn't, their staples wouldn't be the, this heavy front squats and like back squats and like they'd see that there's a lot of benefits to like a pendulum squat or an overhead press or a hack squat that's like on a good angle. They'd see that because they're, they're students of the game, right? They had to be students of the game to understand how to use their limited resources to relist, to build the physique they did. So they're obviously intelligent, right? But to tell me that you don't think they would use this stuff, like if they had the opportunity, it's just kind of asinine. Like every other sport evolves, man. You don't see anyone on a golf course with fucking clubs from 1913 that are made of stick. It's like a fucking bamboo pole or something with a fucking like whittled rock on the end. And they're like chipping the thing. And they're like, I want the Titleist thing that like I barely tap the fucking ball and it's gone. The, and with the angle of the wedge is perfect for like, for exactly this kind of shot. And that's what it is with bodybuilding. Like if you're not going to evolve, prepare to fucking die. Like everything in life, man, if you don't evolve, you will die. So. It's like, you guys can play this game all you want. Like, oh, I'm old school. It's like, no, you're just making excuses. And you're making excuses probably for like lackluster physiques. And that's fine. So you can live and die with your, your one rep squat and your deadlift ability. But if you're a bodybuilder, which some of you watching this are, or would like to look like, that's not the path, man. It's not happening. Like any type of resistance training will elicit muscle development. But like I said, we are not muscle builders, we are bodybuilders. We're trying to develop the entire body and have an aesthetic physique and like develop every little tiny muscle in every area of the body and step on stage one day, right? So.
that's what we got to do to do that. You're probably going to need the best stuff. Like a lot of people, they, because obviously we film here, and they're like, oh, you know, what do we do if we, our gym doesn't have that stuff? It's like, one, you have to be innovative. Like, find some stuff that does work for you. Two, get your fucking ass up here and come train. Or get your gym to buy some better shit. All you gym owners out there, like, you don't have to have every piece that we have here. You can cherry pick the fucking good ones out of here. A couple pieces a year make all the difference in your gym, right? Would make all the difference to the people who belong to your gym as well. You tell me like an average gym goer who's maybe watched our, like my videos or anyone's videos in like a well-equipped gym, even the gyms in like Dubai and Kuwait and all these places. You don't think they'd be jacked up if you bought like a fucking Panada fucking pendulum squat? Yeah. Your whole fucking gym, you'd get more members from one machine. But you're like, oh, I'm gonna just stick with the cheap shit. Buy all, the, buy all the gym equipment off those gyms that failed. And the shit was never serviced, half of it's rusting. And like, and, the, and your whole gym's gotta improvise and do these crazy, crazy lifts. Like to make other movements happen with the equipment they have. To the point where it's like, what are you doing? Like, you're literally like making up stuff as you go. I won't single out who I'm talking, like the gym I'm talking about. I see clips from this place all the time. It's just people are, the equipment is limited, I get it. Like you don't have money to buy equipment, cool. But like you can get rid of that shit equipment and get a little better equipment. So you get to sell two of those pieces to get one good piece. You know what I mean? But, so don't get mad at people who have access to stuff. You're just gonna have to fight through it and do your own thing. And like I said, if you only have access to barbells and dumbbells, just make it work, I guess. You know what I mean? You'll still, you'll still put on muscle. Just, you're gonna have to really become a student, a real student of lifting to understand how to get the maximum benefits out of barbell and dumbbell work because it, there's a lot of room for interpretation on that shit, man. Like, it's not just moving that bar up and down or pushing that dumbbell up and down or pulling it to you. You're gonna really have to understand like, bi like body mechanics and anatomical like positioning of the body. You're gonna have to understand that stuff because you don't have a machine or like a, setup that's putting you in the spot in the right spot to begin with and allowing you to have limited thought process and just move right but in the same breath these guys who fucking are convinced that like like you could walk in here and you could be and you could think to yourself there's every piece of equipment in here for every body part and for every area of every body part right so Therefore, I can just sit down on that decline press over there and I'll press it away and it's a decline press. So I'm working my lower pec. But are you? Just because you push the, like it says, sit here and push these handles down. It's like, yeah, but did you, how did, how did you move when you did that press? Like, did you lift up through rib cage like I teach or did you just like push through and then stand up and be like, man, my shoulders fucking kill me. But like, that was a decline press. So these fucking lower pecs gonna, blasted like I don't feel it but it's fucking pretty pumped by the end of the workout that kind of stupidity the machine the machine doesn't maketh the man <laughs> maketh the lifter <laughs> you gotta understand how these machines work as well right they're not just like it's not just bodybuilding for dummies hop on this machine this is for your inner thigh this is for your quad this is for your, <laughs> this is for your calves. Like, I just do these machines and walk out and look at me. I'm fucking Jay Cutler. <laughs>